There are three ways to execute your JavaScript code. The simplest way to start writing JavaScript is directly into the browser. And this is possible because all modern browsers are able to interpret JavaScript and come packaged with so-called developer tools. So open either Firefox or Chrome browser. If you don't have them, you can just download them. Open a new tab and right click and choose inspect. And this will open this section, which is called developer tools. And here's a tab called console. And if you open that and we can clear that with this button, this is a place where you can write JavaScript directly and the browser will interpret and execute your JavaScript code right here. So you don't have to set up anything. And this is the easiest way to start especially if you want to try out some simple commands. So let's actually write some JavaScript code there. So you can create variables here, or you can do some calculations and you can add number one and number two, etc. So you can do many things here. However, if I refresh the page, of course, all the code will be gone. And also you can execute only one command at a time. And usually, when you're developing, you want to save that code and execute the whole thing at once and not have it disappear every time you refresh the browser. So for that, you need to write JavaScript in a file and then give that file to browser in order to execute the code inside. And the file that browser accepts to execute JavaScript code is HTML. You can check out my other video where I explain exactly HTML, CSS and JavaScript. But since I just want to show JavaScript code execution here, I'm going to create a basic HTML outline so that our browser can execute the JavaScript code. So how can I write the HTML file with JavaScript code in an editor? So if you are on Windows, you may have a notepad, a simple text editor, or I on Mac have a text edit and I can create a new document. If I open that, I can write just normal text here. So I'm going to write some simple HTML tags. I'm going to create a separate video where I explain the HTML syntax, but here we just leave it at the basics. So maybe you're wondering if I'm writing HTML in the same editor where I would write normal text, how does browser know that it's an HTML file? Well, when you save the file, instead of text document, I'm going to choose HTML. So .html extension, and I'm going to call this file index, which is a standard or common name for the main HTML file. So when I save this, you also see the icon that has Chrome logo in it, or maybe some other browser logo. That means it's a browser executable. And since this is just HTML, in order to add JavaScript code, I'm going to add tag called script. That's where JavaScript goes. And and this is a part where we'd write all the JavaScript code. So for example, here I can create a variable called some name and so on. Now I said you can write the whole HTML and JavaScript in here, but the problem with using the simple editor is that they don't help you in writing code. So here you see they don't highlight the keywords. They don't tell you you made a syntax error or any other tips. So for example, in browser, when we wrote var name, some name, you get the highlighting of the keyword of the variable name of the data type. For example, if you have a number, it has a different highlighting, etc. So you don't have any of that in simple editor. And it also looks pretty ugly. So instead, there are special editors for different programming languages that help you with highlighting and other features to write the code. And there are special editors to write HTML and JavaScript code. One that I personally recommend is Visual Studio Code. It's free and you can download it very easily and you'll be set to start coding. I'll put the link of Visual Studio Code and the browser download links in the description so you can quickly access them. I already have Visual Studio Code downloaded, so I can just open it. And this is the view. So you can either create a new file here or you can open an existing one and edit them here. So we're just going to copy the contents of the index.html and we're going to paste them here. And if I save that 
and I'm gonna save it in the same destination and in the file name I'm gonna write the extension as well so I'm gonna replace the existing one and here you see the highlighting and you also see that I get my first error that is complaining about the quotes because the quotes from the simple editor were wrong so I'm gonna delete them and write like this and the special editors have many different features and shortcuts that help you in programming so especially if you're a beginner you're gonna need that and this is the absolutely minimum required HTML contents in order for the browser to accept this. So we can actually get started with it and write JavaScript already inside. Of course, in reality, it's not gonna look like this, but this is good for starting. And to execute that index HTML that we just wrote is actually super simple. Either you go to the file, just drag and drop it onto the browser window and it loads it, or you can simply go and double click on that index.html file and execute the script. Now we don't see anything because we haven't created any content. In order to make sure that our file is working, let's actually add um, something that we are gonna see, which is console.log. This is basically a command that prints whatever we provide here in the console, the console where I showed you how to write JavaScript directly. We can actually print out to it from our script. So I'm gonna save this and go back to the browser and I'm supposed to see that message right here, right? Now, when you, whenever you make changes to your file, you don't have to go back and double click or drag and drop it again because your browser already has the location of that file right here. So it knows where the file is located. So if I refresh this, it will go and find that file again, go through the contents again and show any changes. So it printed our message here. So after every change, you can just refresh it. Okay, so I showed you two ways to write and execute JavaScript code. And the third way is instead of writing the JavaScript here, creating its own JavaScript file and then linking that file inside the HTML. So how it's gonna work is I'm gonna create a new file here and I'm gonna copy everything inside the script text to that file. So like this, and I'm gonna save this as app.js. So see the extension here is .js, not HTML. So it's gonna be a separate JavaScript file. And app is again, just some standard naming for the main JavaScript. So I'm gonna save that. And again, I see my highlighting here. And in this editor, also I see the type of file that I'm editing. So now in order to link the contents in this file inside the HTML, you do that using the script tag, but instead of writing anything inside that text, we actually leave this empty and right here, we're gonna write source, double quotes, and file name of the JavaScript that we want to link. So I'm gonna write ape.js here, and this is just a syntax in HTML. So now when I save this and go back to my file and refresh this, I should see the same message. So just to be sure, so some message from JavaScript file. So save it again, refresh, and you see the changes. So this is a third way to write and execute JavaScript. And before I end this video, there are two important things to understand. The first one is that in real projects, you have many files. So you have um, multiple JavaScript files, you have multiple CSS files, and all these files belong to one project. So how it works is usually you create a dedicated folder to group all these files together. So for example, somewhere on your file system, you would create a new folder. You would create, you would call it the project name, my project. And you would put all your project files inside that folder. And here you would have, let's say another JavaScript file or a CSS file. So when you have a big application, obviously your code 
your HTML and JavaScript code will be much more than what we saw in this simple example. So for example, you would have a main JavaScript and then you would have own JavaScript file for the login code. You would have own JavaScript file for the register code, for the profile section, etc. You end up with multiple files, um, each one containing hundreds of lines of code. So inside of a project, you create this hierarchy where you group your files logically or per file type um, or in any other way. So for example, if I created here a new another folder and I call it JavaScript, I could put all my JavaScript files inside. So I have index, app, CSS and own JavaScript folder for all the JavaScript files. So now that I have uh, restructured or rearranged the locations of the files and go back and refresh, it's not going to work anymore because the file locations are wrong. And that's the second point that I wanted to mention is that the locations where the files are living or files exist is very important in programming because everything is so linked. You have to make sure the locations are correctly set. So for example, this location or also called path to the file is wrong because we moved index.html into a my project uh, folder inside the demo project, right? So either you can again double click this and reopen the correct file or you can also adjust the location right here. So we can actually do that, my project. But this will not work because we also change the location of JavaScript file. Before it was in the same folder as index.html. So we could just provide the name of the file, but this value here is actually the location of JavaScript file. Otherwise, how would index.html know where to find that file? It could be anywhere in the file system, right? So we have to tell it exactly where that app.js file is. So now if you go back here, you see that this is index.html and our JavaScript, our app.js is inside JavaScript um, folder. So I'm gonna add that folder path here. And with the slashes, basically you separate the folders. So inside JavaScript folder, there's app.js file, go and find it. And know that I don't have to provide the whole path as here. I just have to provide the location relative to the index HTML file, right? So starting from this location, where is that JavaScript file? So if I go back and refresh this, it's going to work again. And as I mentioned, uh, file locations and linking the files correctly using that location is a very important concept in programming and understanding that will help you a lot at the beginning. And the location is also important inside the uh, editor because if I go here, you see that my editor cannot find app.js deleted from disk because I moved that file. So it's also important to update the editor and give it the new location of the file. So to do that, you can simply close the old one and then reopen the new file so that editor knows the location of the new file. So to summarize, you can execute JavaScript either directly in the console or you can write it inside the script tags in index.html file or you can link it as an external file, again using script tags but defining source which points to the location of where the JavaScript file is located. And this is especially important when you have HTML file that has 100 lines and JavaScript that has also 100, 200 lines. You want to keep things clearly separated so that you don't end up with one file that has a bunch of code just mixed in from HTML and J JavaScript and CSS. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.